everybody. Welcome to ARE Live. I'm Mark Tier, the founder of Black Spectacles. And today we're going to be speaking with uh, four architects who recently passed their exams. And we're going to talk to them about the secrets that they discovered along the way um, and how they got it done. So you guys are going to learn a ton. Um, before we get started, if you'd like to attend our next ARE Live broadcast, where we'll have a discussion about ARE 4.0, Construction Documents and Services. We're actually going to do a mock exam uh, for that. Um, you can visit blackspectacles.com slash podcast to register. And then during the broadcast, you'll have a chance to ask questions to the group, and we'll be with Mike Newman again. Also, as you guys probably know, here at Black Spectacles, we have built uh, a comprehensive ARE 4 and 5 exam curricula that you can utilize to prepare for the exams. I just want to remind you guys that if you guys would like your boss to pay for your Black Spectacles membership, we have firm licenses for any size firm, whether you work at a 10 person or a 10,000 person firm, you know, we have a license to give multiple users access, you know, group administrators and reporting and all that good stuff. Um, so if you have any interest in that, you can fill out the form blackspectacles.com slash firms to learn more about that. Um, and then of course, for everyone who is going to be uh, interested in something like this, we do have a special discount on Black Spectacles individual memberships, uh, which we'll share as well. And then we'll be taking questions using the GoToWebinar question box, um, as well as on Twitter using the ARE Live podcast hashtag. Um, so uh, we hope for this to be an interactive session. Um, and so I'll be manning the uh, the question box on GoToWebinar here. So do, you know, don't feel free, don't hesitate to uh, to use it uh, liberally. So we have four architects: um, Joe Miller, Kate O'Neill, Megan Doherty and Courtney Rombo uh, with us today. I'm going to start and ask each of them just to tell us a little bit, you know, kind of orient everyone, who you are, where you're from, what firm you work at, when you got licensed, and um, and what approach you took to passing the exam. So, Joe, I'm going to go ahead and start with you. Joe, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Mark. So I work for Clyde Jubilwald Architects in Las Vegas, Nevada. I have uh, been licensed within the last two months in June, so I'm uh, still getting kind of used to it, but I took the five exam plan, uh, which is the you know, three exams in 4.0 and two exams in 5.0. I went, I went pretty smoothly, so I'd recommend it. Awesome. Okay. Um, how about you, Kate? Hi, thank you. Um, so I work for Hastings Architecture Associates in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, also just got my license recently in the last two months, um, and I took all 4.0 exams. Okay. Yeah, we have a nice mix today. So, uh, so you, for everyone listening, you're going to hear a really nice kind of mix of taking different different variations of of the ARE. Um, so, thank you, Kate. Uh, Megan, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Megan Darty. Uh, I work at FRCH Design Worldwide in Cincinnati. I took the 5.0 exams, and I took them in February, and found out in May that I had passed them. Um, so, I took them kind of a weird way, but still hopefully have a lot of advice to give. Yeah. Excellent. All right. And uh, Courtney, um, tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm Courtney. I work for myself in Montclair, New Jersey. I work mostly on high-end residential with remodels and additions. I took the 4.0 all seven exams over a little over a two-year period. Awesome. All right. Well, welcome, uh, Courtney. Um, I'm going to um, go over here to our first question. Kate, I think I'm going to start with you. Um, talk about exam timing schedule. How did you buy and schedule the exams? And what we'll do is we'll we'll sort of we'll, we'll circle through everybody here to get to get their thoughts. But Kate, we'll start with you. Um, well, I really scheduled one at a time. Um, I think the biggest thing that I had to maneuver around was just deadlines and mm -hmm. life. Um, as everybody does. So I tried to, you know, find a time where I could block out at least a month to prepare and would schedule them that way. Okay. And how about you, Megan? Um, so like I said, I scheduled all of my 5.0s when they came out with the incentives, uh, which was in February. So I actually scheduled them all at once and took them all within a month. Um, however, given the time, I think that out of the 5.0, with the exception of the PPD and the, the two big ones, which I would take four weeks each to study, and the rest of them I would take two weeks. So say that again. You said you took all of them in one month. Is that right? That's correct. All right. I wouldn't recommend it except for when the incentive is on. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> very, very good. Um, all right. Uh, Joe, how about yourself? So I worked backwards from my when I knew I'd be done with AXP. So I took eight months back from when I'd be done with my uh, hours for AXP and scheduled them one by one. I made a schedule and then just, you know, spent a month on each. You know, beginning of the month, I'd buy the exam and just that was kind of my incentive as well. Spending 200 bucks is a good way to get you get you moving. Got it. Okay. And then Courtney. I would schedule the next exam the day that I found out I passed the previous exam. And I think I'm a good example of someone who is a slower learner and a not a great test taker. And, you know, everyone's intelligent in different ways, and that is not my strength. And I thought I could never pass these exams. But once I found the rhythm of taking them every two months and putting in 100 hours, I got into a good pattern of passing and got it all done. That's awesome. Well, you must have been a good enough um, test taker because you're a licensed architect, so that's pretty good. Yeah. Right. Some people have to work harder than others. So. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> all right, awesome. Um, so we have, let's see, one at a time, all in one month, one month at a time, and then uh, if I got that right, Courtney, did you say you waited until you passed, right? Yeah. Okay. So I think that's awesome. I think <clears throat> this is a really great range from, I think this is probably – maybe the fastest way to do it. And then this is, you know, certainly a common way to do it where you sort of kind of go along. Um, and then maybe these guys here are sort of, you know, kind of in between. I think um, these are some pretty common approaches that we see. So let's go over to this next question. Um, what holds you back from taking the exams faster? Courtney, maybe I'll, 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 I'll stick with you on this. I took my first exam 10 years ago and failed it and was so discouraged that I didn't take another exam until two years ago, in which then I passed all of them on the first try. And I, I guess the thing holding me back was fear, but once I just got over that and learned how to pass the exams and read a few books and listened to some blogs, then nothing was holding me back really. I just went for it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Megan, how about you? Um, so I would have never taken the 5.0s the way I did, except for the incentive, which if you don't know what that was, in February, they offered a free retake for every test that you took, so it kind of eliminated all the risk. I waited so long to start taking them because, same thing, the fear, I had been out of school two years, and I just never felt like I was going to be ready enough and life was too busy for me to really say, okay, I'm going to sit down and do this. Um, so having said that, I think that pretty much you should just go take them. <laughs> like the fear thing now that I'm past it seems silly. Totally. Yeah. <clears throat> I hear that all the time. Mike uh, often says, you know, if you guys were a bunch of business students, MBA students, um, and you had to take these exams, you would just sign up for all of them and take them all and know just based on probability, you'd probably pass half of them without even studying for them. And then you would have three or four left to, you know, to, to study for. So some folks might think that's reckless, but on the other hand, um, as you say, it does uh, conquer fear, um, which is very common. Um, and that, that the issue about getting discouraged, I hear that a lot um, about folks who you know, they have one or two and they don't get the result they want. And then, man, they sort of like to hell with that. <laughs> um, so, okay. Uh, um, Joe. Yeah. So I started testing a month after graduating from college. So that was, I kind of pushed myself to get into that early. So that didn't really hold me back. But what held me back was waiting for the 5.0 exam to come out and then Similar to Megan, we have to wait for the, the we had to wait for our results for a month or two. So that was another kind of limbo, not knowing if you passed or if you if you failed or not. So. Okay, and then. It's now uh, resolved. Five point is now you find out within like twenty four to forty eight hours if you passed. And then, uh, and Joe, did you get to, to take advantage of the incentives as well? Yeah, I did. So it was the like Megan was saying, the free retake, and then they even were giving away. 
$100 gift cards for the first 500, I believe, or 200. Yeah. They were really throwing, throwing money at you guys. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I understand that. I guess the last time they transitioned, I think from 3.1 to 4.0, um, there was a lot of heartburn about that transition. And so I think that they've, they took it really seriously. So it was good to see, good to see that. Um, Kate, how about yourself? Um, I think the biggest thing that held me back from taking the test faster was just finding the time to study. So making sure that if I set a date that I had at least, you know, three weeks beforehand where I didn't have a deadline or didn't have um, plans on the weekend that would prevent me from really hunkering down and studying. Um, that was the biggest challenge. And just, I definitely would have taken them back to back if I could have, but just found that I had to schedule them a lot more sporadically throughout the year. Yeah, I think that that's a huge problem um, that a lot of folks have. Um, Kate, when when in your career did you take these exams? Did you take them? I'm not sure how much experience you have right now. So, um, sure. I uh, I graduated in 2013, okay. um, and then I started taking my test in 2015. So I waited about two years after I was out of school. Okay. Um, to start taking them. Yeah, that seems like a, a very reasonable uh, time to start. I know a lot of folks who kind of get stuck and find study time, you know, they've waited 10 or 15 years and then they're like, oh my God, how am I going to find the time? Um, we often find that there's just never a good time to do this. Um, right. Um, in fact, not to be not to be on, on, on sales pitch mode, but um, you're just making me think about the group coaching program that we just launched um, and how... I guess that's kind of the goal of it really is to sort of, you know, you kind of commit to being in a study group, um, you meet, you know, regularly. And then I guess the idea there is to kind of, kind of try to engineer the, the problem of finding study time. Is that like, we just sort of, you know, you kind of commit to the group and it's kind of created, um, ahead of time. Um, did any of you, have any of you done any study groups like that? I don't know. This is just off the top of my head, but you know, at AIA or within your firm that have been helpful to you guys. My firm has a group that meets regularly that just kind of goes over, it's not necessarily a study group in the sense that we like talk about specific questions. Sometimes we will go over specific tests in a general sense, but it's just more of a like motivation meeting, see where everyone's at and to keep everyone going. I like that. Uh, has anyone else experienced any kind of coaching that's been useful? I found the Facebook group. Uh, Courtney, I found the Facebook group and the Google Plus group to be a great community to keep each other going and ask questions. Yeah. Anyone else? This is Kate. Um, and actually, our local AIA component organized a Black Spectacle study class, and um, I helped organize it and put it together. And they were actually studying for different tests, but um, what helped me a lot was showing up and helping other people mm. study. Um, and that really motivated me a lot to help wrap up my own tests. And yeah, that's super smart. <clears throat> that's super smart. Of course, they say the best way to learn something is to teach it. So is that what you're kind of talking about? Right, definitely. Yeah. Awesome. All right, good ideas there, guys. Um, so I know not everyone took the vignettes, and certainly um, I think – Megan, you can kind of put your feet up on the table a little bit here and sort of lean back and be happy that you didn't have to deal with this, I think. If I've got you right, it's 5.0, right? Um, That's correct. Uh, so, um, so then, you know, Courtney, um, tell me about the vignettes. How did you handle uh, taking those? I liked the vignettes a lot. I kind of made it like a video game in my head, a fun challenge. Uh, I would start preparing like a couple days early for them, probably a week before the exam. And I would start by just drawing the vignette, drawing the solution. And then I do that a few times because really you're learning the crappy software mm -hmm. in 4.0, 4.0. And then I would take screenshots of questions I had and post it on Google Plus and people would respond. And usually there was a few end carb members that would respond to questions people had and then just go through the actual sample problems and I always felt so prepared for the vignettes that was 
the easy part for me. Yeah, I think that's a, a good idea to post your, your answer on Google+. Plus. Um, and then for everyone who doesn't know, so NCARB has a website. <clears throat> um, uh, I, I'm sure to say, if you go to NCARB's website, um, they have a Google Plus group uh, that you can participate in for free, I believe, um, where you can ask questions, you can review all the questions and answers that are out there. Um, so a lot of folks find that to be really, really useful. So just go to ncarb.org and you can find that there. Um, Joe, you did the five exam plan, so you took a couple of 4.0s. How'd you handle the vignettes? Mm -hmm. I actually, I also also liked them. They were, I like to kind of change from multiple choice. I viewed them more as just problem solving and drafting. The software was tricky, but if you on the Carbs website, they practice software that you can kind of get used to it. So it was not surprise on an exam day. But I, uh, you know, just a couple days before would use that software and just practice two or three times and go from there. Yeah, and I think that's it. the key here for those of you who are um, just now thinking about taking 4.0, they do have some sample software. So if you go to ncard.org again, you can um, uh, you can download, um, let's put it this way, they've changed it about 10 times about how you can get access. So one way or the other, uh, you can get access to the uh, the vignette software uh, on ncard.org. Um, Kate, uh, tell me a little bit about your approach. Um, so I actually decided to take schematic design first um, in the testing order so that I would be forced to learn the mm -hmm. software. Um, and so that's the way that I handled learning the software and motivating myself to do it. Um, yeah. And then from there, it was really just practicing. And I found talking to other people who had recently taken the exams just about their strategies and about the vignettes helped me a lot, just being able to get advice and tips about what resources they were using. Um, I also used Google Plus Community. I found that extremely helpful. Um, and I watched a lot of the videos online um, and some of the dwarf videos that are available for vignettes. Those were also really helpful. Got it. Um, I know my writing's not super nice here, but NCARB has some sample software you can download, as I was just saying. So uh, so please, that's what everyone's referring to, guys. Um, uh, is, that, is that software you can, um, you can download? So I think in summary, you guys... You guys love the vignettes. Is that is that what I'm getting here? I think Joe. I think did you say that you, you loved it? Courtney loved it. You guys all love yeah, the vignettes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know about love. I mean, love relatively speaking compared to the multiple choice. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, good. Um, so we talked a little bit about groups um, and resources to help you prepare. Um, so maybe we'll skip that one since we talked about groups. Um, I think time is a really important one here. Um, when and where do you make time to study? So let's talk that through, because I think that's kind of one of the keys here. So um, I'll start with you, Megan. Tell us um, when and where did you make time to study? Um, so like I said, I didn't have a whole lot of time. And and when I started taking the test, pretty much Black Spectacles was the only one who had anything out officially for 5.0. Mm -hmm. So, um, I basically used Black Spectacles and I would listen to it while I was cooking, while I was putting the laundry away, while I was cleaning, any time I could put earbuds in. Um, sometimes at work when I was cranking on something that I didn't really have to think too much about. So I just kind of tried to squeeze it in wherever I could. And I just kept like a notepad nearby that I could jot down something if I needed to make a note. Okay, and then, and Megan, tell me, I mean, how much experience do you have as an architect? So I graduated with my master's in 2015, but I um, went to University of Cincinnati, so we have a lot of co-op. Mm -hmm. So I actually had my IDP finished when I graduated, mm -hmm. and then oh, nice. I've been out years. Okay, got it. And I just I asked that question because I think it's important for people to think about, like, okay, well, you know, uh, you know, is Megan. Has she been, 
you know, has she been practicing for 15 years and so she has all this experience or she, you know, you know, she have, you know, the same amount of experience that I might have is some of the questions that people may, might be kind of wondering. So I think that, I think you make the case that, you know, you don't need to have 15 years of experience in order to, uh, um, in order to pass these exams, which I think is interesting. No, I think some experience is probably good. Like I think if I had just graduated, I would have had to study more because some of the questions, especially in like, um, the construction administration is sort of issues that are kind of only conceptual to you when you graduate, but having worked a year or two, mm -hmm. you understand like, oh yeah, this is typical everyday issues. Yep. Okay. Uh, Joe, how about you? So I would try and get about an hour, get up in about an hour earlier and I'd study before work. So there's an hour right there. And then I would try and study over lunch, which is another hour. And then after work, if I can get an hour or two in, that'd be really great. But sometimes it wouldn't happen. But already just having those first two hours of the day was was crucial to kind of doing that every day for a month. It was plenty for me. Got it. It's so funny. I can taste the hot dogs from demon dogs that I used to eat um, when I was studying um, during the week. My wife and I used to meet at the DePaul Library. Um, and I would study and she would grade papers and we would always get a demon dog before we went. So you're making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Uh, so Kate, um, tell me a little bit about um, how you handled timing. Um, so I tried very similar to what Joe was saying. I tried to study um, during lunch if I could and then at least an hour and a half or two hours at night. Um, if I had the time. And then I tried to really cram in a lot on the weekends. So I'd set a limit of, you know, six hours a day on the weekends and would try to really set out big blocks to get a lot of stuff done during the weekends. Okay, got you. So a little bit a little bit during the week, but your focus was more on the weekends. Right. Okay. Um, and then Courtney. I had a similar schedule to Joe and Kate. I did an hour every morning before work, a half hour at lunch, never at night because I was so fried from work at the end of the day. <laughs> and um, usually two to four hours each weekend day. Weekends were big for me too. Got it. And I think, um, I don't know about you guys, maybe you guys could talk, uh, talk a little bit about this. Um, but I found that, I mean, you know, 300 years ago when I studied for this thing, um, it seemed like if I was studying a little bit before work and maybe even a little bit during lunch and afterward that like people in the office started to kind of figure out like, Oh, Mark's studying for these exams. Um, and so people sort of knew that. And I don't know if they backed off a little bit, but I felt like, um, you guys all know what it's like to, you know, um, to be in that office environment. And sometimes there's a little bit of pressure to just sort of, you know, be in your seat all the time but I felt like there was a little bit of leeway when folks knew that you were studying for these exams. Did you guys feel that at all? I felt that there was a lot of leeway, this is Megan, when I was studying, and my firm actually does, um, you get two days off for each test, so presumably mm -hmm. one day for a study day and one day to take the test, and those mm -hmm. are paid days off as a way to motivate you to get through the test. Yeah. Um, so it just kind of depends. I know some people at my firm, like, well, I didn't use, I used most of mine as free time because I used them after I actually passed the test. Mm -hmm. But um, that is a nice way to either, a lot of people actually take the test on the first day and then use the second day to decompress. Ah. Uh, nice. How about anyone else? Um, Good. It's definitely a challenge. Uh, this is Kate. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to balance, you know, making sure you're getting your work done and studying. But the more, I found the more that you spoke up about it and talked about it with your supervisors and um, principals that definitely, you know, you get the respect and support that you needed. Um, it just is a matter of speaking up about it, which I know it's, it's hard to do. And it's, it's hard to bring up those conversations about, you know, needing a little bit of extra time or um, needing time to focus but it's, it's definitely worth it yeah. just to talk about it. 
Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, one of the things I always, uh, we always talk about this, uh, uh, is that, um, everyone who goes through this process ends up being, becoming a better architect, which essentially means you're going to become a better employee. You're going to, you know, you're going to probably know a lot more. You're going to be able to make, maybe let's say maybe, maybe make fewer mistakes. Um, and so in general, and of course this isn't always the case, uh, we hear all kinds of different cases here, but in general, you know, most of your supervisors, they want you to get licensed. And so they will give you a little bit of space in order to do that because you're going to be a better architect. So you're going to do a better job at the work you're supposed to be doing. And also just as a side note, don't forget in most cases, when you get licensed, your billing rate goes up too. Um, and so that means that they can bill you out at a higher rate. So they're like super incented to get you guys, um, licensed. Um, so they should totally, um, you know, be an advocate for, um, for giving you some space to study. Any, any other thoughts here? I don't want to pass anyone up. All right. I'd say over gotcha. lunch was an easy time. And then before work was also an easy time for people to kind of let you be. But I found that I'd have to, you know, once I was done with my work, just kind of get out of the office as a way to not have more stuff pile on. So I think communication is good, but also knowing kind of where to draw the line and when to mm -hmm. kind of put your, your studying before. Uh, maybe yeah, I would say it's go ahead, to, do, to keep time for yourself. Like when I was studying, even though I was doing it at a crazy pace, I did most of my studying in the evenings and on the weekends. But like in my office, I have a group of girls that we go out and walk at lunch. And I didn't give up my walk at lunch because even if you're studying like crazy, you got to make sure you're not burning yourself out. So you still got to allow yourself a little leeway to breathe. Yeah, I like that. Don't burn yourself out. I definitely agree with that. This is Courtney. I think I, I read that in a blog. I think Michael Rosica, the young architect guy, oh, yeah. he wrote a blog about how important it is to exercise. And that was so true because I think there was one exam that I didn't exercise during and I was a mess. And then once I made sure that was part of it, just important to prioritize the things that keep you sane. So much easier. Yeah, that's awesome. Really good advice there, guys. <clears throat> um, so um, I think, uh, Megan, you may have commented on this a little bit, but um, based on your guys' experience, um, and maybe I'll start with you, Joe, how would you recommend firms handle licensure in terms of like benefits, in terms of you know timing and giving you time and space and all those sorts of things? If you could talk, you know, if you were talking to all the uh, CEOs of all the architecture firms in the country, how would you tell them to handle licensure? Yeah, I think kind of the, the big thing is giving time off, even if it's just the four hours for the exam for candidates to go out and test, just so you're not having to schedule on a weekend or use your own PTO to do it. Besides that, I think it's, it's kind of, it's nice if firms will, you know, give you more time than that or pay for exams or provide study material, but I don't think it's really should be required or necessary. I think every firm is different and their budgets are different. So it's hard to ask too much of them. Yeah. Kate, how about yourself? Um, totally agree. I think that time off is, is such a major factor in people taking tests and signing up for them. I also think that something that a lot of firms could benefit from is just designating one person in the firm as a you know, firm licensing advisor or just a resource or somebody that you can talk to um, for advice or tips or maybe you're just getting started and need some help signing up. Um, I think that could be a huge benefit. Yeah, I just learned about this, that now uh, there are firm licensing advisors um, that uh, are taking, uh, that are in, in many architecture firms. Um, I don't know that I ever encountered one when I was practicing. Um, so it's awesome to hear that you know, now they have a more formal kind of resource in lots of different firms. Um, I think that's great. Uh, Megan, how about yourself? I think the time off was key. I know my firm's kind of the, uh, against the rule with the two days off, but having the day off to take the test, at least then you can usually schedule them in the morning and then have some time to just, like decompress because it's so key. Like you leave that test and I did it a, twice where I took the test and then came back into work the that afternoon and it was just impossible like I was worthless like I should have just gone stayed home because you're so I don't know like the stresses of taking the test 
Um, so I think that's key. And for me, the study access to study materials was um, pretty vital for us. My firm will reimburse, like reimburse me for my Black Spectacles um, account while I had it activated. And that just really helps that it was another burden I didn't have to worry about. It, it was another obstacle that I couldn't say was you know, an excuse for why I didn't take the test. Yep. I think that's great. Okay, Courtney, how about yourself? I agree with everything everyone said. Um, communal study materials, I think, is great. The last firm I worked at had a lot of materials from, like, the 80s, and it was actually kind of awesome because it was different than anything I had bought, and it was similar concepts and different diagrams and different practice questions, which was nice to mix it up with all the current stuff. I like that. That's the first time I've ever heard anyone recommend 80s study materials. That's awesome. <laughs> Very retro. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay. All right, very good. Um, and, you know, we hear lots of different things about how firms handle licensure. Um, I think one of the key points here, though, is I think maybe if you're a, a aspiring architect who's maybe looking looking for uh, your next position or your um, uh, or your um, you know looking for your first position, uh, one of the things to consider is to find out what how they support their architects um, on the path to licensure and whether or not they you know whether they they care much. Um, we do hear some firms that they, they just simply don't really care very much, it seems. Uh, but there are lots of great firms out there who really do take it seriously. Um, and I think it's kind of a reflection probably on their, you know, their, um, their approach to professional development for their, for their staff. Um, so I think that might be one kind of tip is just sort of keep your eyes open as you're considering different firms and how they handle uh, licensure. Um, so, Here's an interesting question we were talking about. So uh, we've sort of alluded to this a little bit here. Uh, thoughts on taking the exam right after graduation. Um, so of course now, once you graduate, you're assuming you've completed, uh, well, actually you don't have to have your IDP or AXP completed. Um, you, can, you can take your exams. Um, what do you guys think about that as an idea? Do you think it's a good idea? Should you try to take them right away? Should you uh, should you wait until you have a few years of experience? Uh, Megan, maybe give me your perspective on this. So I think that taking them right after you graduate is great in the sense that you're already in that mode and you're studying because even just being two years out, that was a big hurdle for me. It was like, oh, I just really don't want to hit the books again. I'm like finally done with this. It took seven years. Why do I want to like go back into it? So if you could motivate yourself to do it right after graduation, I think that that would be great. However, I do think, at least on the uh, 5.0, you're going to have to build in a little bit more study time than someone who's worked a couple of years. Um, so it just kind of depends. I think given the opportunity, again, to do it again, I probably would have tried to take them right after school and just studied more. All right, so maybe study more here. Uh if uh, you have less experience basically, right? Yeah, so I think that about two years experience definitely cuts down the study time because you just, especially with the 5.0 is set up to be more in the way that a, you would work through a project. So you have more experience working through a project. I don't, I think that you could do it without having that experience. I just think that some of the concepts of dealing with the client, dealing with the guys is going to be a little bit harder to understand. Okay. Uh, Joe, how about yourself? What do you think? So I highly recommend taking it as soon as, gradu as soon as you graduate, just because you're you're still in that mindset. You're still used to studying. So I just viewed another six months of college. It was just, you go home and study. It was just another kind of extension of that. I think with the experience, I think it's like we talked about earlier, it, taking these exams makes you a better architect. Mm -hmm. And so why not be a better architect earlier in your career? And so for me, it's all about getting it done early and getting it done as quick as possible. Yeah. Okay. Um, Courtney, how about you? I would say take them right away. In a way, I think I did better because I had experience because I could, some of the questions I came across, I could, think back and imagine it by my encounter that and remember it. But in a way, maybe I wouldn't have made that mistake 
skilled if I had had the knowledge from the exam. So I think it would have been nice to just keep going when I was 23 and get it done. Yeah. Okay. Good. And then um, Kate. Um, definitely agree with what everyone's saying. I think it's really important to realize that there's never right time to take the exams. It's always inconvenient, it seems. So um, I think the idea of taking them right out of school is really smart. And I know it's, it's hard and you want to break and you want to go and celebrate being on your own and, you know, accomplishing getting through school, all that kind of thing. But the more, the longer you wait, the more that life gets in the way, I would say. So the idea of taking them maybe when you have a little bit less responsibility, maybe you're just starting out in a firm, um, I think that's a great time to be able to focus and take them and really show people that you're very serious about your career. Um, it's also another benefit to taking them early. Yeah, I love this. The longer you wait, the less time you have. And, you know, when you consider things like, you know, um, uh, I forget what they call it, the rolling clock or whatever it's called. Um, but just the idea that, you know, you only have so many attempts here over amount of time. I think it's five years. You can take these in um, and you have to wait, you know, some amount of time. It's only 60 days, I think. Right. But um, I agree that the longer you wait, the less time you have. There's never a right time. I think this is awesome. Um, does anyone have uh, any other comments here? Yeah, shoot. Yeah, I do. This is Courtney. I can say as someone who waited 11 years to start taking them again, that was 11 years of every time someone asked me if I was the architect, I had to pause and say, well, I'm not licensed, but yeah, I'm the designer on this project. And it's so nice not to have to say that anymore, to just be like, yep, I'm the architect. <laughs> Feels great. Yeah. You got your street cred. Now you can say yes. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Okay, good. Um, so uh, this may be seem a little kind of general here, but I think you're all going to have your own kind of angles on this. So Joe, let's say you're talking to somebody who's thinking about taking the exams. What's your general advice? How should they go about it? Um, what's, what would you recommend? I'd say just start by scheduling an exam and then just kind of jump into it. Worst case you fail and then you know more about the exam. It's one of those things that I like uh, Megan's approach where you just take them all and see what happens. And worst case, you, you have to do it again, but you know some more about the process and what to study and what not to study. And I think that's a good way to do it. Yeah. There's nothing like, there's nothing like uh, staring down the, uh, the idea that you've already paid a few hundred bucks to, to, to take this thing. Mm -hmm to motivate you to actually yeah. do it. I know a lot of folks who they, they, they don't actually do that and they just sort of conceptually are studying for the exams. There's a big difference, at least in my experience, uh, of sort of conceptually studying for the exams versus like, oh shit, you know, I have two weeks before that exam is going to start. Um, I'm, you know, really, I can't go out with you this weekend. I have to study. Um, exactly. Yeah. So I think that's awesome. And even, even just having a, like creating a schedule too, creating a schedule when you want to take each, each exam and then just sticking to it. Just hang that schedule up at your desk at your office and always look at it and use that as a motivator too. Yeah. Okay. Um, Megan, how about you? Um, so I definitely, I would say that for 5.0, I would just lay out the timeline and if, especially if your firm pays for your test, schedule all of them. Um, like you said with the conceptual, like I had been conceptually studying for 4.0 structures from like August of last year through whatever, I guess, till February when I took the 5.0. Oh I never actually did it. So yeah. I never actually was motivated to really do all that much studying. Right. Um, and I also found like I have a couple friends that started taking tests and they got stuck in that loop where they get discouraged. So I think if you have the ability to, I would lay out the timeline you think you need, whether it's a month for each test or whatever it is, and I would schedule all of them. So that way you don't have a choice when you, if you fail the first one, you don't get to go, oh, I failed. Well, I've got to wait 60 days anyway. So, and then it kind of just starts that spiral of procrastination all over again. Yep. Kate, how about you? Um, 
So my professor actually gave me this advice and he said, uh, you should find a rabbit to chase. And whether that's another person who's testing that you know or an, uh, a friend from school or someone in your office, um, it's find somebody that you can keep accountable, you know, find somebody that can keep you accountable. Um, so you're scheduling tests at the same time, there's a little competition, just make sure that you're talking to somebody else that's taking them, would be my biggest advice. Accountability, that's awesome. Uh, Megan, or did I already ask Megan? Courtney, sorry. <laughs> sorry. My advice would be to make it fun for yourself. I didn't figure this out to the end, but by the end I was having a lot of fun. I was drawing pictures with color for difficult concepts and taping them on the wall next to where I studied and treating myself to a long weekend vacation. And I, I used the app Quizlet and if there was like a, if, I don't know if you guys know what Quizlet is, but it's, it's an app that you can make flashcards and you can get pictures of your phone. So you could put the term and then on the reverse side of the card, which is virtual on your phone, you could have a picture of like a diagram that you drew in mm -hmm. color. And that made it so much more like a game, like something I was looking forward to every morning. That's awesome. What was the name of that app again for everybody? Quizlet. Like quiz. L-E-T. Yeah. That's awesome. Quizlet app. And then you can do it anywhere. You can yeah. just anytime you're bored. I was never bored for a year and a half because I was <laughs> always on Quizlet. <laughs> That's really funny. Awesome. All right. Um, so those are good ones. Um, suggestion for keeping up your morale during the process. Um, so uh, let's start with Kate. Um, I, I guess I'd say just talking to other people, you know, telling people when you pass and um, talking to people uh, that are doing the same thing as, as you are. I think that's a huge, huge benefit to taking the test is just finding a group that you can get support from um, it makes a big difference just to be able to talk about it. Yep. Okay. Uh, Joe? Yeah, I think it's key to just be very careful about not burning out. I think it's, it's very easy to study too much for these exams and then you're just overwhelmed on testing. So still take breaks, like people were saying earlier, still find time to exercise, find time to do the personal things that you want to do, and just kind of be studying around that, so. Awesome. Megan, how about you? Uh, I would say that one of the keys is giving yourself some leeway if you fail, you know, talking yourself through it so you don't get that discouragement and then stall out again. Um, you know, it's everybody, most people fail a test, most people fail two tests, like this, the talking around the office with other people helps you kind of get over that, like, well, this isn't like the end all that I fail, now I'm done. It's not a one and you're out. You know, you just keep going. However, you need to motivate yourself to do that. Yep. I think that's awesome. Uh, Courtney, how about you? I definitely agree with that. But I was so discouraged the first time I failed, and I just thought I wasn't cut out to be an architect. And so many people fail and those are the people that keep going and end up passing and becoming architects. And I also I talked about this before, but I really liked setting goals and giving myself rewards, like whether it was a long weekend away or a fancy dinner or a spa day or something. It's very necessary to reward yourself after working so hard. Yeah. I think, uh, it's maybe worthy for everyone who's on the phone, who's a little, or who's on the webinar here, who's worried about failing. Um, I can tell you that I failed uh, one of my exams. Anybody else? Can anyone else sort of confess? We're going to have deep ARE confessions here. Um, anyone Anyone else fail any of these exams? Yeah, I did. It's Courtney. I failed one 10 years before I started them all, and then I failed the vin the easiest vignette I thought on B D C S and um the roof vignette, it was so easy and I still don't know why I failed. But yeah. That was so frustrating. <laughs> yep. Anybody I else I knew it back and forth. Anybody else wanna reveal their deep secret that they failed one of the exams? 
Um, this is Kate. I, I also failed a test. I failed PPP. Yeah. Um, which was pretty disheartening. I also failed the vignette. Um, so mm -hmm. it's a, a hard score report to get back as one where the only thing that's, you know, in the red is the vignette for sure. Um, and yeah. I will say it did um, trip me up for a while. Um, it took me a while to get back into it. Mm -hmm. And I really regret that. Um, and I think had I talked about it more and owned up to it more, I probably would have gotten back into it and started taking exams faster. Um, mm -hmm. It can it can be a big hit to your morale, but um, it's so important just to realize that it's you know it's not supposed to be easy to mm -hmm. get through these tests. It's hard, and it's okay to fail, and a lot of people fail. It's it's no you know measure of your intelligence at all. It's just yep. how well you can take the exam. Yep. And I'll tell you this, guys, you know, for everyone who's listening, you know, most people who I know um, or speak to, uh, you know, everyone seems to have, have failed at least one of these exams. So don't ever let that, that hold you back. In fact, you might even consider, you know, making that just a part of your approach. Like, well, you know, I'm, you know, somewhere along the way, maybe I'm going to fail one of these, but I'm not going to let that stop me, which I think is one of the reasons why that approach of if you can handle it, um, scheduling all of them, and which means buying all of them ahead of time, really helps because you're just basically forced to um, to just move on to the next one, um, and uh, and and subsequently not slow down. So, um, let's do one more one more here. Um, I also want to hear some ideas like um, about what you did to celebrate. Um, I feel like. Everyone seems to have a different way to kind of celebrate, you know, either taking the exams or passing the exams. Um, Joe, maybe I'll start with you. Did you do anything to celebrate, um, you know, uh, along the way? Yeah, I'd say it was mostly just the day after taking the exam or the day of, crime and being some friends after work and kind of just not thinking about architecture for a solid couple of days, besides work, of course, but just you know, give yourself a nice long weekend or just time away from there. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Kate, how about you? Um, I saved a bottle of wine. From the, I bought a bottle of wine the first test I took and saved it and wouldn't let myself have it until I, all the tests were done. Awesome. Um, that was my reward. Awesome. Uh, Courtney, how about you? One of my favorite ways to celebrate was to text the few people that I had been talking to and that were encouraging me that either were also taking their exams or had just passed them and just getting their reactions. Because if you post on Facebook, people are like, oh, cool. I'm not really sure what that's all about. Or I didn't even, I thought you already were an architect. But if you like text people that are in it and know how hard it is, it's awesome to feel their encouragement and love. Yeah, that's really cool, especially when you have a tight, tight knit group like that, uh, which it sounds like you really do. Um, and then I think Megan, you're last, right? How about yeah, you? Yeah, so I didn't have much time to celebrate having taken them, but when I was all done, I got a new puppy, which now actually ended up being more work than anything. But that was my tip. when I finally passed them all, I got a puppy. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, good. Um, that's great. I love this one here. One, one. I think my favorite one, I probably say it every single time. Uh, I think Josh <clears throat> from Land and Bone Baker told us that after he took every single exam, he went to buy himself a Lego set. Whether he passed it or not, he didn't know, but he bought himself some Legos every single time. So uh, <laughs> everyone's got their own way to celebrate these things. Um, so I guess for everyone listening in here, uh, I'd recommend uh, coming up with an awesome way to celebrate because it's, you know, it's a ton of work. So um and I should mention to everyone who's listening, I'm not sure if you can see all these comments. We have a ton of questions and comments here, but a lot of people here are also saying that they failed uh, some exams as well. So uh, again, I just think it's worthy to um, to note that uh, so that uh, you know no one feels uh, feels bad about it because that's like probably the biggest thing we hear is that you know somebody fails and then they kind of get skunked and they just don't want to kind of move forward. Um, so let me, let me, let me pull here from one of our, some of our questions here. Um, let's see here. 
I think this is an interesting question. <clears throat> Ashley uh, asks, you know, what advice do you have for studying differently after you fail an exam? Um, so I'll, I'll offer that to the group. So you get your report. He says you failed. Um, what did you do different um, after that? I'll open it up. Anyone can take this one. Um, um, I guess, or, okay, go, go ahead. ahead Kate. I'm sorry. Um, so one of the things that I've heard a lot of people do after they fail is to try to study the sections that they were lacking in. And as a result, they might end up failing again. Um, so I tried really hard the second time studying to really hit all of the material again, just as hard. Um, and it's difficult to reread the same thing over and over again. So I tried to focus a lot of my time on uh, practice questions and uh, you know the practice exams were really helpful. But just, I think the key for me was really making sure I reviewed all of the material again. Um, as difficult as that sounds. No, that's really smart. I actually, I've never heard anyone say that, and I think that's really good advice. Um, cause you can imagine that you're, you know, you fail a certain section of the exam and you're okay, well, I'm going to go study up on that. And you kind of forget to study all the other stuff cause they're not just going to ask you about the stuff you failed. So I think that's really wise advice. That's good. Anyone else have any other thoughts here? I was going to have the I, same answer. I just did oh, really? every single practice question I could get my hands on until I couldn't find any other ones. And I didn't care if I had to pay for them. I just practice questions were so helpful. And I guess the one I failed, it was the, the roof vignette. So then I just went on Google Plus and tried to figure out, looked at every roof vignette question every everybody else had, why they failed, and tried to figure out why I failed, and asked questions and talked about it. The one thing yeah, I did was I didn't um, fail any of them, but I didn't know that for a long time. So what I tried to do when, after I took the test is as soon as I got done with the test, I would kind of like brain dump what I thought like, okay, I was definitely weak on soils. I didn't know nearly enough of what I should have on soils or whatever it was. And I would try to kind of make a list after each test of things that I knew I needed to hit harder when I went back. And I tried to do that just as soon as I walked out so that I, it was still fresh before I forgot everything. Yeah, I think that's interesting. Um, where to focus your studies afterward. It's almost like an insurance policy. So in a way, you sort of knew where to focus just in case it didn't work out. Right, which with the strategy that I used when I just took them all at once, which is what I would recommend doing, it was helpful because then, it, then you kind of knew like, okay, so if I do fail this one, at least I now have this. I've taken the test, I know what's on it, and I know what I'm weak on, so I can... Right go into it with a better head next time. Yep. Oh, that's great. Any other thoughts here, guys? Um, so I want to ask uh, a general question here. There's uh, both Milton and F Fatima have asked a general, sort of a similar type of question, um, which probably goes back to, you know, time. How do you handle work, studying, and social life? Um, uh, Fatima said that, you know, uh, since I've started studying, I don't have any time anymore. Uh, what are your thoughts about that problem about time? I'll open it up to anyone. If you feel like you don't have any time anymore, then you're going to get burned out and you need to readjust your schedule a little bit, give yourself a little bit of free time because otherwise it's going to, it's going to kill you. So kind of find some space and find some, uh, find some breaks. Don't burn out. Kind of what, uh, what Joe was saying. Any other thoughts here, guys? Yeah, I would say For give sure, yourself. Right. I would say give yourself. Go ahead. Two months instead of one month, if you can't fit in a social life, because yeah, it is important to maintain that and exercise. So just give yourself a little more time if you need to. Mhm. Mm Let's give yourself some more time. Right. And I would definitely say, you know. Um, letting my friends know ahead of time that yeah. I was going to be kind of out for the next couple of weeks because I was studying was a, just a big thing for me. And it also helped, you know, after getting done with the test and being able to go back to my friends and say, oh, you know, I've got some time off now. And 
you know, they just play right into your support system if you keep them in the loop and keep them up to date on what you're doing. Um, you know, I tried to send funny text messages of myself studying to my friends to let them know I was still alive and still still working hard, but um, just trying to keep everyone in the loop. But, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's, it's absolutely a challenge to balance work life and social life and trying to find time to study. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not easy, for sure. Do you have any thoughts on that? Ultimately, you're taking these tests for yourself to better yourself and to be an architect, and it's all for you. So if you kill yourself in the process, I don't really know what you're achieving. That's a good point. Yeah, I like that. Joe, did you have something to add there? Yeah, it's, it's just that the exams are a process that people really don't understand that aren't in our industry. And so going back to just telling your friends, telling your family that this is something that you're going to do, but you need to kind of some, take some time away to, to finish it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really good. Um, one question I have here, which is a little specific, but I, I think it's worth asking here because it's probably on, on some folks' mind here, thinking about taking the five exam plan. Benjamin asks, how does your approach uh, change going from 4.0 to 5.0. And if I've got this right, Joe, you were the only one who did the five exam plan. So talk mm -hmm. about the like different strategy and different approach for those two different exams. So I'd say the biggest thing was the, just the study materials were so different. Uh, for 4.0, our firm had a lot more material and exams and black spectacles so had kind of a different process for doing it. And now 5.0, it's a very different. I feel like there's a lot more material, a lot more to go through. Mm -hmm. But I think it's because it's more of a holistic exam. And so I'd say my studying didn't really change in that I would spend, you know, the first two, three weeks doing a lot of reading. And then the last week doing mostly practice exams. Okay. Yeah, I think that's really good. All right, beautiful guys. Well, we're, uh, we're closing up here and just about out of time. So... I just want to start by thanking uh, thanking you, Joe, Kate, Megan, and Courtney for sharing your stories with everyone. Um, I really appreciate really appreciate that. I know that uh, we had pretty amazing uh, attendance today. I think we broke our uh, GoToWebinar account today. Um, so um, so thank you for sharing your stories. Thanks for everyone for asking their questions. Um, and um, just as kind of a reminder to everyone else, we do this airy live every month. Um, it varies the topic. And so the next one we're going to do, we're going to focus on ARE 4.0 construction documents and services. So for those of you who are still taking 4.0 or thinking about the five exam plan, that might be a good one for you. We're going to do a mock exam review, um, which we'll issue ahead of time. And then you can, um, you know, you can uh, listen to Mike kind of discuss the questions and answers um, during the session. Uh, so if you want to participate that, you can go to blackspectacles.com slash podcast to register to attend. And just like today's episode, as I say, you'll be able to, to participate and interact with the group. Um, to learn more about our ARE exam prep curriculum, so a number of you asked, you know, what are the best materials? Of course, I'm, you know, I can't be objective about that. Um, of course, we think us here at Black Spectacles uh, maybe make the best materials. But there are also, you know, lots of different uh, folks out there who do make exam prep materials. Um, so in the case that you're interested, you can go to blackspectacles.com where you can actually try out any of the free course videos. Um, and as I mentioned at the, at the beginning of the session, if you'd like your boss to pay for your Black Spectacles membership, um, you can visit blackspectacles.com slash firms to learn more about our firm membership uh, for firms of any size. And then also, as I mentioned, for those of you who are ready to start preparing for the ARE right now, hopefully these guys have motivated you to lock it down and, and, and get licensed. Use coupon code HOW81517YT. We'll get you 15% discount for the entire duration of your ARE exam prep membership. And then finally, uh, tomorrow we'll send you an email follow-up about today's live broadcast. So please let us know what you think and share any suggestions that you may have. Uh, we always read every word that you guys write uh, and use them to tune our next episodes. So thanks so much.